Okay. The force acting on this one is a resultant of two forces. This charge is attracted to this by this charge. There's a force of attraction between these two because this is positive, negative. So there's one force along this line. Let's call this F1. There's also the other charge also attracts this one. Because plus minus. So there's another force of attraction. These two forces, since the charges are the same, four and four, and since the distance is the same, then these forces are equal in magnitude. They're just opposite in direction. So what are these forces, F1 and F2? What is the magnitude of F1? It's K, Q1, Q2. Remember, that's a formula. That's Coulomb's law. Where K is 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0, or it's 9 times 10 to the 9. So it's K is 9 times 10 to the 9. Q1 is 4 microcoulombs. So that's 4 times 10 to the minus 6. Q2, and remember, that in, in applying uh, Coulomb's law, for the magnitude of the force, we just take the magnitudes of the charges. So if you want to be uh, very specific about that, you can, you can put those absolute signs here. So we don't try we don't take we don't try it minus here because the magnitude of the force I'm just looking at the magnitude of the force magnitude is always positive so times q2 which is again the magnitude of q2 which is again 4 microcoulombs so 4 times 10 to the minus 6 so that's k q and q2 over r squared r is 0.03, which is 3 times 10 to the minus 2. Square, that becomes 9 times 10 to the minus 4. This is F1. Now, how much is that? The 9 cancels the 9. 10 to the minus 6 times 10 to the minus 6 is 10 to the minus 12. Times 10 to the 9 that's 10 to the minus 3. 10 to the minus 3 over 10 to the minus 4, that's 10. 10, then I get 4 times 4, that's 16. So it's 16 times 10. So it's 160 newtons. So F1 is 160 newtons, and so is F2, of course. It's the same magnitudes, same distances. So, I have two forces, each one is 160 newtons, acting, and this is 60 degrees, because it's an equilateral triangle. So, what's the net force? I can recast this problem this way. I can put an x-axis and a y-axis, and think of this point as at the center. Like here's the y-axis. Is the x-axis. Then the angle here is 60. So F1 is like that at 30 degrees here. And F2 is also at 30 degrees. So what's the net force? I can look at the components. The components of F1 I have a x component is negative, and it's equal to f, it's equal to this, sine 30. So this is f1 sine 30, but it's negative. So it's minus f1 sine 30. 
Here, what's the component? It's positive. Again, this is 30 degrees. So what is this, which is the same as that? It's F2 sine 30. So this is F2 sine 30. But F1 and F2 are the same. So F1 sine 30 is the same as F2 sine 30, except that here is minus, here is plus. So the x components cancel. And only the y components add up. Now, F1y is just F1 cosine 30, but it's down, minus. So you get minus F1 cosine 30. And then the y component of F2 is also down, same thing, and it's minus F2 also cosine 30. F2 is the same as F1. They are both 160. So we get Fy, F net Y, or you could write this as a summation Fy's, which is a net Fy, would be minus 160 cosine 30, minus 160 cosine 30. So minus 320 cosine 30, which is root 3 over 2. So it's minus 160 over 3 newtons. This is Fy. This is the total force. And it's down because Fx is 0. The x components add up to 0. So F net is 160 square root of 3 newtons. And it's down. Down, negative means down. And the magnitude of the force is 160 square root of 3 newtons. All right, so this is essentially, it's a really simple uh, example. All you need to do is just use Coulomb's law to find the magnitude. <coughs> the, magnitudes of the forces and then you just have to keep in mind that forces are vectors and so you must add them like vectors so then once you get the magnitudes and you know the direction the directions of the forces it just becomes a problem of vector addition <laughs>